Do you seriously think I'd explain my masterstroke if there remained the slightest chance of you affecting its outcome? <sighs> so, I'm recording this on Thursday. Uh, this is a couple days ahead of the beginning of DC Fan Dome. And that is going on Saturday and Sunday. Hopefully I'll have this video out on Friday. And obviously there's a lot of anticipation about Fan Dome. There's already been some leaks about stuff that's going to be there. We've had teases for some sort of trailer for um, Snyder's version of Justice League. There has been teases and hints and leaks about um, Ben Affleck taking on the cowl again for the Flash movie and possibly something about the Batman stuff on Suicide Squad and all that. And it has, and I'm pretty sure by intention, completely drowned out the fact that um, Warner Media gutted DC Comics, like, badly. And I debated whether to put this here or to put this over in the break room of geeks. Do subscribe there if you haven't already. Because this isn't the sort of thing I'd normally eat up a video here on, but because I feel like this is getting drowned out, I want to bring attention to it on the largest platform I've got, which is here. So Warner Media did almost a clean sweep of the executive and creative heads of DC Comics. Almost everybody is now gone. Now, they'd already started this process by booting Dan uh, DiDio earlier in the year. And now, at this point, basically the only one left is Jim Lee. And he's not in the position he was in before. He's not the publisher anymore. So he's been effectively demoted and everybody else at the top who is in the creative end of things is gone. And this should be a bigger deal than it is. Again, I, I do strongly suspect that the announcements of this gutting I've got no other word, of DC is timed with fandom so that the conversation around DC and any ghoul searches you do for news about DC shifts over to this. Like, seriously, I was double-checking my sources on this, and I, a straight Google search for news on DC, none of it's about this anymore. It's all been flushed out because of fandom leaks. The heads at Warner Media basically looked at DC... Now, this isn't DC Entertainment. This isn't the the film cinematic division we're talking about. We're talking just the comics, the prints, the origins of all these things. And, like I said, they cleaned house. And it's very telling that this wasn't a reshuffling. This wasn't a taking out some of the top people and moving others up from within. This is just... This was just... Pff, clean sweep. Bunch of people just gone. And no real immediate announcements about about any significant people replacing them, uh, or at the very least, significant people who already exist within the industry. This should be troubling for a number of reasons. There's the broad general reason that this is a, a corporate entity basically kneecapping its own subdivision because... Somebody in the accounting department said, you know, it's actually more profitable if we fire a bunch of people and cancel a bunch of what they do. Now, I've done a, cor a rant on corporate structure and some of my issues with it having worked in that environment for a long time over on the break room of Geek. So you can see my thoughts there for that. But this is not altogether unexpected because ever since AT&T bought Time Warner... This sort of thing was going to happen. And that is what happens most of the time when a larger entity buys a smaller one, particularly a smaller one with a lot of different divisions within it. Because these things, something like DC Comics has been built up over decades by people who love the work, people who are attached to the characters, the medium. This means something to them. And now they are under the financial control of people who, as far as they are concerned, this is only numbers on a spreadsheet. And if those numbers don't say what they want, they're going to start cutting stuff. They have no emotional attachment to this. And I'm not trying to judge them. for. I'm not, I'm not being like, ooh, the evil corporate overlords. But I am going to say that, um, you know, 
You know who does have an emotional attachment to this are the fans who have been buying this stuff and made the IP worth a darn anyways. But no, that, like, they don't care. And it's also worth pointing out with fans that fans are what make up the bulk of the comic book creating industry. Because the thing is, comic books, getting into that is like, well, it's like getting into YouTube or burlesque to make the comparison to things that I myself do. There are some people who can make a decent living doing it, but if you go in trying to do that, you're going to be very disappointed very quickly. You get into it because you love it. You love the medium. You love what can be done with it. You love the work. And if you're very fortunate, you'll be able to pay your bills with what you do there. Nobody makes the aim to get into comics for the money. And so when people take over who do have an eye on money even above you know, what your normal executive of a company like that would be, they're just going to start cutting stuff. Now, does this mean the death of DC Comics as we know it? I, well, it's hard to say. There were obviously plans in place. There were things they were working on doing that are at best up in the air. There's going to be and has been recently a ton of book cancellations. If I were to make a guess, basically they're going to start treating the comics division as something that is home to the things they want to make movies out of specifically, and that's it. And that's not an altogether new mentality. I mean, it's the reason that Batman gets four books while things like Hellblazer and Young Justice and Teen Titans all get canceled. But, and I hate that I'm about to do this. Like, here's the thing. I don't like when events like this force me to praise Disney. Because I have a lot of problems, well, I have a lot of problems with any company the size of Disney. Nothing should be as big as Disney is and own as many things as as they do. But to make the comparison, because Disney owns Marvel, Disney specifically set out to to acquire Marvel and has let them do what they do and be what they are. And Disney seems content to let it be a test kitchen for things that they can then market in other media. But they didn't They didn't step in. They didn't take over. Now, maybe part of the problem is that AT&T, strictly speaking, didn't buy DC Comics. They didn't set out to acquire DC Comics. They set, they set out to acquire and did acquire Time Warner Media, which happened to include DC Comics. It basically makes DC Comics the unwanted stepchild. AT&T married Time Warner, and with it came this kid that they don't really care for. Whereas Disney actually wanted Marvel specifically and sought out. So maybe that's at the heart of what the difference in approach is. But it's very telling that Marvel has been allowed to experiment and do some things that maybe they work and maybe they don't. But even if some initiatives or whatever fail, it doesn't result in the company getting gutted. Because then, what good is it? The only time it makes sense to do that is if you're looking at only through the lens of what what does the spreadsheet say? What do the numbers say? And the considerations of are we engendering ourselves in a positive way to the audience? Are we going to upset the people who made this IP valuable in the first place? Those sorts of things are secondary at best if they are even considered. And... In addition to this, you've also got the DC Universe app and streaming service. That's clearly on its way out. Pretty much everything has already been shifted or is being shared with either HBO Max or the CW. And there's a pretty good chance that that thing's just going to go away, which is also going to be a mistake. Not necessarily for the streaming aspect of it. I think streaming shows specifically on that was always a mistake. But DC does, like, they can benefit from an easy way to access their comics digitally. Again, Marvel has Marvel Unlimited. And whether or not you like Marvel Unlimited as an app, it's very good to have a way for your fans to come in and start going through your back catalog in a a nice little one-stop shop kind of way. And I, well, it's pretty much a guarantee that all the streaming stuff is going to go off of DC Universe. I would be shocked if DC Universe doesn't just get shut down. Maybe not immediately, but I would be shocked if it still exists within a year. And if that happens, which I expect it will, that is also going to be a mistake. They're making it harder 
for people to get into these characters. Now, granted, DC has actually, DC Comics, has done plenty of its own damage when it comes to that. DC Comics, as much as I am frustrated by this move, I... I'm not about to defend the creative choices of DC Comics over basically the last 20 years. I will admit to being more of a Marvel person than a DC, but I have a lot of friends who are DC readers, and I watch the pain that they go through every few years as they get their hearts ripped out and gutted by the moves that happen over there and have been happening. So I wouldn't have objected to a shift in creative spirit, you know, bringing in different people with a different mentality. As opposed to just... Whoosh, and they're all gone! This has more the feel of like when EA buys a smaller um, developer for video games. And, and puts them on a project that is outside that developer's wheelhouse. Because it's what EA's marketing and accounting department says this is the genre that'll make more money but that's not what we make we make this sort of stuff that's why you bought us because we make this no we bought you because you added value now make what we tell you and then they do that and their fans don't like it because it's not what they wanted and they get shut down does that mean that dc is going to completely die well no no dc will always be kept alive if only for batman (laughs) there will always be batman comics Probably more than there should be. But I think any sense of expanding out from that, anything that extends farther than the core Justice League members, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, the League itself, anything that is ancillary to that, it's not going to get its own book anymore. I think we're going to see a lot more cancellations of niche and sleeper hits which were not necessarily unprofitable but but just weren't as profitable as batman is therefore they can go away this bums me out and it infuriates me that it's kind of a lapsed news item already because here comes dc fandom where they should be made to answer for what's going to happen to the comics, but they won't be made to answer to that. Because they'll go, ooh, look, Snyder Cut, Batfleck in Flash, which, look, as far as that news item goes, let us not forget that the Flash movie has been completely retooled from the ground up like six times. They've had a half dozen different writers, at least as many different directors. It has been, and the writers haven't just been rewrites. It's been like page one start over, massive rewrites from the ground up. I believe them when when we hear they want Ben Affleck to come back and be Batman in this. I don't believe it'll happen until it actually starts filming and we get on set photos. Until then, until I see on-set photos and I know it's actually filming, I don't believe literally anything that anyone says about a Flash movie. I just don't. I'm not saying that this can't happen, but, like, I'm not taking it seriously until it's actually filming. And I'll try and... I will probably do some kind of a wrap-up and overview of Fandom after it happens, but... Oh, man, there's just a cloud over the whole thing. And I'll try and be more positive uh, about it when I do that. I say try. I make no promises at succeeding. I am a cynical bugger. But, yeah. Ahead of all that, I needed to remind people that even as they are celebrating the multimedia and the IP value of DC Comics, they are tearing the heart out of it. This is a live autopsy, folks. The corpse will keep squirming and emitting little gurgles in the form of basically Batman comics and milking Watchmen some more. But I can't imagine that DC is going to ever be again what it was which is a comic book publisher 
run by people who are passionate about it. People who were making decisions that I did not agree with whatsoever, but who were passionate about what they did. That's done. And unless someone else swoops in to buy specifically DC Comics out from under um, AT&T, because, I mean, AT&T, obviously, they're going to keep Warner Media. They bought it for a reason. But if, unless someone else comes in to buy that set of stuff specifically, somebody who cares about it, ideally not Disney. They should not own both of the big two. Oh, God. But unless that happens, I don't see a lot of stuff to look forward to, at least on the comics front specifically. Maybe movies will still be good. Maybe we'll still get decent animated stuff like the Harley Quinn animated series. But the thing that started it all, the comics, this is not good. Hate to be a downer, folks, but that's just where things are at right now. DC Comics having the axe brought down, not on its head, but on a number of appendages. What do you think about it? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Usual stuff to do. You know what it is. Like, share, subscribe. I have a Patreon that is a huge help. It keeps the lights on and uh, ensures that I can eat. But um, you also don't have to. Simpler things um, like links down in the description to other social media and, and the other stuff that I mentioned before, the likes, the shares, subscribes, they also help. But you don't have to do any of it if you don't want to because end of the day, you're the council. I just run the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.